Episode 1. It's time to sit on down and sip the tea with the Root Chat, bringing you tonight's Tea of the Week. Gossip from the streets, what's trending, and what's cooking at Chit Chat Chew. Three, two, one. This is the Group Chat with your host, the Travis Webb, Darius Williams, Gaskin and Joy Sloan. <laughs> What's up, you guys? It is the one, the only representative big guitar section all across the world. It is Travis Well, the angelic Travis Well, the incomparable Travis Well. And welcome to the wonderful worship praise department of the group chat. <laughs> What's going on, Deacon Joy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all. Happy Thursday. It's so good to be here. Good to be seen and I'm here. Amen, amen, amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Director Darius Williams. How you doing? I don't know how I feel about this theme for tonight, but we're going to praise God anyhow. It's good to be here with you all. It's <laughs> one more time. Okay. And we're going to get them to the Deacon wife. Troy, tag, he did it. What's going on, Troy? <laughs> oh, I gotta be the deacon wife. I think that. I like sitting on the front pew with my legs crossed anyway. Okay. What's going on, Travis, y'all? What's the tea? Go going good. How y'all week for going with? Not that much. You know, I've been having a time this weekend, as I see you guys had a time this weekend without me, but you know, I went and had a little time with my friends and things, and I went to Traffic and Toast and Boozy Bounce, and my friend Nubian put out this song with Akasha called Stank Walk, and it's a Florida vibe, so I was giving my little Stank Walk in this video as I was getting ready to go right on and have a few more, you know, mimosas and things. Oh, look, uh, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yes, yes, do it, do it, yes. <laughs> I can smell it. It's crazy, crazy to me. <laughs> I'm what first of you, George? Because all I saw over social media on um, yesterday was you was this little walk thing, and I, I, I beautiful. I, I don't know what else to say. Oh, wow. It gave George. Give me, give me my props when props I do. It's okay. The girls in the comments. Oh, I, oh, I know. love the trees. I love, I love that gray pavement. I love that color gray. Girl, you want me to read you tonight, but I'm not gonna do it. Girl, <laughs> there's too much. Girl, it's been too much, re it's been too much reading going on on here social media today. Here I'm we go. Not going, I'm not gonna do it with you today. Y'all see it. Y'all see you should read, it. You oh. can read your Bible. It's still a little, it's still a little flabby. You might want to go do a couple more push-ups. Oh, oh, I've seen that jacket before. Mm, yeah, you can mm. get hit too. Catch it. Catch it. <laughs> Just a fabulous show. We ain't fighting with the fist to punch it hard tonight. Okay. Not over here at the group chat. Not at the group chat. We don't do that. <laughs> okay. How was your? How was you guys' weekend? Though, what did you guys do? Because you oh, know we had a main show last week. So how have you guys been? You know, one thing I realized. You know, I'm I'm early thirties. <laughs> early thirties. Uh -huh. Thirty one to be exact. <laughs> and you know, I realized that. You know, my level of George, you're going to be quiet or you're going to be sitting in the back of the audience today. <laughs> Anyways, you know, the older, older I get to realize that, you know, I can't drink as heavy as I used to in my early 20s oh my or God. even mid-20s because the recovery time afterwards, you know, I feel like yeah. I had gout all on my body. I had gout in my elbows, my kneecaps, my knees, my toenails, my toes, my ankles, honey, my reach tube, my boot hole. I had gout everywhere. And it took me a while to recover from it. But now I feel finally back to normal. But it was a lot going on. You know, I had a lot of alcohol. Shout out to Tito's, Casamigos, Kenneth yeah. King, um, Paul Mason, Jen, Moonshine, all type of shit. So, Travis, it's safe to say you had a painful weekend. <laughs> well, you know, pain is the start of beauty. So, yeah, I guess you could say I had a painful weekend, but it came out beautiful. Listen, Travis was over to my house over the weekend and what <laughs> <laughs> I asked one of my friends, she ain't never met Travis, but she met him like once or twice. And I said, well, how old is Travis look? <laughs> she said 36. She said, no, she said 35. Fine. She said that George looked 36. So regardless of what George want to say and what he want to talk about age, at the end of the day, <laughs> she still gave him what he was worth. <laughs> and that is almost 36. He would be 36 yeah, this year. Myself, hey, he was born in the 80s. Like I was born in the 90s. So never forget oh. that, OK? Perhaps we will be getting senior discounts before I oh. use you. She said Travis look damn near 40 years old. That is <laughs> low. 
Darius, how did your weekend? Enough of Jordan with his foolishness. We ain't going to try to read him because I got some news for his ass. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, Send the pizza, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Darius, how was your weekend? What, 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 listen, I'm about to stop trying to hang out with uh with George and Travis. It's just so much, just so much alcohol involved. I just come hang out with me. It's classy. I'd rather be with Troy Stankwalking next time. Yeah. Troy was drunk as hell all weekend. <laughs> okay. No, I was just hey, drunk on ahead. Sunday. Stop putting that out there saying I was drunk all weekend. I only drunk on Sunday. Look at him. What is drunk ass? He drunk now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what else, no. What else no cup tonight for? because baby, I can't do it. I cannot stomach another drink right now. Like, I don't even want to smell mm-hmm. liquor until I go to Mexico, period. What else did you do this weekend, Troy? Um, what else I, what else did I do this weekend? Nothing. And who are you with this weekend? Lean in it. Oh, okay. Who else I was with this weekend? We all would like to know. Crickets. <laughs> Build your hope. <laughs> On things eternal. <laughs> On things eternal. Uh, talk yeah. to me. Talk to me. Seriously, talk to me. What happened? Right. Nothing. We have a show to do. Let's move forward. You'll get it before you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Troy, back to you. I'm going to go ahead and take over and start my segment. The longest one. Um, oh, girl, I don't care. Are you a gossiper? I'm so excited to be a gossiper. I, thought, okay, girl. I just had to get George because he's on my case tonight. And I don't know why. They, I, you didn't have to get me. He Your check me. is no bigger than mine, honey. You missed me, and that's fine. Okay, now, y'all, we had a solar eclipse, a full solar eclipse that has not happened since... I want to say 2017. I think there won't be another one until, and I think it said another 20 years. It's going to happen again for 20 years. So did you guys see it today? Were you guys interested in it? Did you guys see what it looked like outside? Did you see the darkness? Child, the eclipse was not eclipsing like I thought it was going to be. I don't know if it was because of the side time I'm on, but honey, it was not eclipsing like it was. I didn't have no shades from the Dollar Tree, so I couldn't look up to the hills with covering my hip. So I had to look a little down. I saw a little shadow by the tree, and that was about it, honey. It wasn't eclipsing like I thought it was going to be. Somebody should have warned me because I know a lot of my friends were asleep during that time, and they took a nap. And all you work from home people, y'all know y'all were sleeping because I didn't hear for none of y'all during that time, and I used to hear from y'all. So I don't know what y'all were doing, but y'all was asleep, honey. It seemed like the earth was asleep too. <laughs> yeah, Miss Earth was definitely see, but I think I thought it was. You didn't go. Did you? How did you not see it, Travis? It was dark at one point. Y'all know Travis don't live on planet Earth. That is nothing new. I no, am not right. surprised. Girl, you asked me the question, or you asked um, him the question? I just want to make sure. I asked can... everyone. Okay, he asked, you, Travis, he asked right? you a follow up question. How did you, you asked see Travis it? right as a follow up, and you want Travis to answer, you want George to answer, because if you want George to answer, I'd be quiet. Not okay, tonight. I would like I'm you to answer, people. Travis. Answer for me. Move on to George since he want to keep on talking over me. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why anything celestial. How do you say it? Celestial? That's the word? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That any of those events I live for, you know, I'm really into the Zodiac and all that kind of stuff and, you know, what what it means and all this. So, yeah, I hope y'all put out some good manifestations today during that time because, you know, all those things will come true. I, now, Absolutely. I will say after that eclipse didn't happen, I, you know, things start happening like good stuff. So, you know, I'm hoping whoever this new Mother Nature is, or the Earth, or whoever she worships, I don't know. But mm-hmm. I hope, you know, she got some more blessings coming this week. You know, it was three good things that happened to me after the eclipse, literally, all in one day. So, you know, I'm excited for this new thing. I hope they're opening up a new brain cell for me and a new idea in my head, you know? Oh, Travis, what yeah. time was the eclipse? <laughs> it was uh, uh, around like 2-ish, 2-45-ish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Baby, I don't care who tell it. <laughs> Go ahead, Troy. Anyway. But do you remember what time it was since you're asking me how to calculate and what time it was? I absolutely do remember what time it was. I was actually out at the cemetery um, mm-hmm. when Doing it, when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a beautiful <laughs> moment. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. <clears throat> Troy, I don't know what's done tickled you. <laughs> Have you had a nap today? <laughs> he said that's what you did. At. Okay. Anyway, we're going to move on from this, George. We know that you love laying people to rest. So I love that for you. Um, we're gonna go on to the next topic, which is matter of fact, this <laughs> What I'm not gonna be is double team tonight. And and, and there is the fact that you were sitting over there keep yes. in, and honey, you were you know I ain't gonna even tell your business. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> There's a way you oh, do it, baby. Yeah. There's a way to do it, George. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Adario tonight, okay? Now let's go on. Let's move on with the show. Let's move, move on, on with the next topic. Now, 
We're gonna go ahead and just drop George out for this conversation because we know he's not gonna have anything nice to say. I'm not gonna be Carter by Beyonce, who went to number one today, the first country album by a black woman to go number one on the Billboard 200 as well. I'm sorry, the hot, yeah, the Billboard Hot 200 as well as the Billboard Country Charts. Beyonce Cowboy Carter looking amazing. I love the hair, I love everything about it. My favorite song on the album is Two Hands to Heaven and also Two Most Wanted with uh, Miley Cyrus. I yeah. really could cry listen to her and Miley sing together. So um, I'm actually impressed with the album. I actually like it, but I'm a country boy. I actually love country music. Um, you know, I grow, I grew up listening to um, Big Green Tractor and things like that. So um, yeah, Beyonce, they're her big one. I oh, now it. everybody's a country singer. Let me tell you something. I don't know what's on the track. The only reason I hear Beyonce is because my partner loves her and loves his country music, but I'm not gonna hold you. And I know y'all gonna eat me up in the comments, but just from what I heard, I just don't feel that it falls in the realm of country music, but that's my opinion because I listen to country music. But I digress, I mean, whatever Beyonce does, it, you know, but do you know that country music don't cut me off when I'm from talking. black people? Don't cut me off when I'm talking. We don't have to sit here and do like one on one conversations every time we do a show. You know we what? I'm we can interrupt right. and have a debate. Go ahead, Troy. It's your show. Go ahead. We can go ahead and have a debate. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. I'm done. You can because black on. country music came from black people, and you don't have to have that country voice to be singing country music, George. That's not uh, what country is oh, all about. Lord Jesus, what did I? Let me look at my country. Can I get out of mine? Because I'm not going <laughs> to be in, in just no, be girl. like this. You know you signed that 360 deal with Chase Reality. You're going to be right here. Okay. Okay. Listen, I'm not going to hold you. Shout out to Beyonce for doing her thing. I'm just not a fan of it. Um, of of the of the album, and that's just that on that, and I'm and I, that's all I got to say. You, I mean, George, George, you're definitely entitled to your opinion, but I do want to just push back on the idea that it's not a country album. Like, if you think about country music, it's about telling stories. It's about you know having the feel of those banjos, the harmonica. It's about like you know using that simple form. I think Beyonce knocked this out of the park, and mm -hmm. I also think she did a good job of choosing people like Dolly Parton. Uh, who's very reputable in the country industry, someone like Miley Cyrus. Now, that song got cracking, for real. Um, that song had me ready to fall in love, baby. And I was just like, yeah, give me some more of this. So I really uh, I really enjoyed the album. And I ain't going to hold you. It's a little lengthy. And all of the songs don't hit. I feel like Renaissance, there were no skips. But on this Cowboy Carter album, there are songs that I will press skip on. But the ones that I like, I really love. Congratulations. Thank you, George. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You know, in my opinion, she definitely hit the ball out of the park to the point where the ball did not land in the park. Um, so for me, it was a no for me. It is some songs on there that I do like, like Jolene, you yeah. know, and I like Spaghetti or Ravioli, whichever the name. I can't remember which one it was called. <laughs> um, it was one of them. You know, I like those two songs, but I tried to get the song an opportunity. And, you know, is this not for me? I'm not saying it's a bad album. But it's just, just not for me. I love Beyonce as the artist. You know, I put a lot of hopes in Renaissance, and Renaissance was like A1 for me. But if I had to give her a grade on this album for me, Travis, not for the Beehive, but me, Travis, I'm not K, a I would give her a C minus. D. Wow. Wow. It came in at a D for me. Just not enough because she's Beyonce. But I still so. love her. She been outside. Y'all been noticing. Beyonce, she been outside lately. You see, she popping up everybody award. She taking pictures with everybody. You know, Julius or Julian. What's his name? Julius. The security guard. Julius. Julius. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say Julius. Mm -hmm. It started with the J. Mr. J, the security guard. You know, he out the way now. He ain't covering over her no more like a potato head. Honey, he out the way. She outside. So, you know, I, I like this for her. This is the Beyonce that we fell in love with, and I'm glad she's getting into an era where she get comfortable. But actually, do shout out to Beyonce because she don't do rap music. She don't do gospel music. She don't do R&B music. She don't do country music. What's next? She don't do rock music. Who knows? She come for everybody. Yeah, that'll be act three, actually. So congratulations to her, but I have to give her a C- minus on this one. I love you, Beyonce. Still, though, girl. Next. Okay, well, we have a C- minus and a D. I'm going to give her an A. Um, I'm sure you are. As well as um, the album. I mean, for me personally, when I first listened to it, I didn't see any skips because I like to listen to an album straight through, and I feel like it flowed for me. Yeah. So, um, but it was it was it was pretty good to me. I'm gonna give her an A. I'm gonna Beautiful. give her an A minus. Um, but I like to grade on the curve, so I'm gonna give her five extra points, so it'll come up to an A. Yeah, I'm gonna give her an A. Yeah. Well, my now, we can talk about great. you know Pat Labelle or somebody like that. Then yeah, I can see. Like That's why. Yeah, she didn't. Shut up, George. Go ahead. 
Sometimes you got to talk to you. Sometimes you got to pull your own self in because I was going to go <laughs> to hell with you. Don't go to hell, brother. I'm going to let it go. Uh, anyway, next in the chat tonight that came across my desk, Diddy is back in the news again. Every week is Diddy, Diddy, Diddy. And y'all know we'll keep y'all updated every time we get up here. Diddy's son, Christian Combs, is now one of the defendants. Oh, he looks just like his daddy. That he looks just like his daddy. Okay. Yeah, that, Apple don't fall from the tree. Okay, so he is now being accused of sexual assault in the lawsuit that also names Diddy as a um, defendant as well. In one recording, a woman believed to be the alleged victim is heard saying, Excuse me, you don't touch my Please, legs like that. I'll move my legs the way I want to. Uh, uh. If I want to do this, then I will. <laughs> you don't touch my legs like that. I don't understand why he would bring his kids into things like this. I wouldn't want my children involved in anything like this. Um, it says that um, it's a part of his sex trafficking investigation. Um, but as you know, last week or week before last, we talked about it. Diddy and his, you know, his house got raided. Um, they had the kids in handcuffs. Now you got Misa Hilson online. She um, trying to defend her son, talking about it was too much. They shouldn't have did all that. And da 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 da. But I don't know if she understand the kind of case this is and what they looking for. And also, <clears throat> I just think that Diddy should have just like, if you're gonna do all that other stuff, leave the churn out of you. You don't have the churn and mess the last couple of years. And now they in some old mess. And I just hope they all get out of it. I don't know if Diddy gonna get out of it, but I just really hope his son didn't have anything to do with it for real, for real. Cause he still got a life ahead of him. I think he only like what, 20, 22, 23, something like that. Yeah, he 24. is in his early 20s, but I have to yeah. say, like, father, like son, you know. Mm -hmm. Diddy, he raised his kids a certain way. He should have raised his kids to do the very best and be the very best, yes. but he didn't do that, unfortunately. And it's sad that his son get involved in it. But at the end of the day, you know, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. And, you know, I hope his his son at least get out of it. You know, get him on probation because he still got life to live. But Diddy, on the other end, you pushing 60, and, you know, you need to pay for the things you've done. You know, this is karma on you. I'm going to state this, and I'm going to stand on it. You know, this is karma for him when he was doing making the band and the people had to walk across that bridge. And, you know, we don't like bridges now. You had to walk across that bridge and get that uh -huh. cheesecake and then come back on that um, bridge and pass that cheesecake. And he didn't eat that cheesecake. And that's going for him. That's going for that choreographer, Lorianne. Lorianne don't put a little voodoo in that cheesecake. And well, he I ain't seen like Lorianne and yeah. it in. And she got something to do with it, too. They're going to be adding uh -uh, her because like she knows what's going on. on my Fargo girl, Lorianne, Lorianne ain't, been, ain't been addressed yet. Mm -mm. They're gonna add him and that um Salas, uh Fonzo Bentley. Mm -mm. He knows something. You know, the gays know. Mm. Travis, you know what? You might be on to something today. I ain't gonna even lie. You might be on to something. I'll say this, y'all know me. I'm I'm a big <laughs> proponent. I'm anti prison system, all that stuff like that. Any way that we can get somebody from going to lock them up. <laughs> <laughs> this is who <laughs> lock up. This is who need to be doing hard labor. This is who need to be on the chain gang. Okay. Now a man can't pay a child support. Okay, let's figure it out. Okay. A girl lie about this fear. Okay, we can figure this thing out. But all this sexual assault and all this racketeering and Rico and all this the all this different lock them up. Lock them up and throw away the key. I don't care because when you start talking about violent crimes, especially sexual crimes against women and other vulnerable people and using your power and your money and your influence to ruin the careers of people like young Miami and now your child about to be up in this thing as well. Lock them up, throw away the key. Hard labor in the words of George, hard labor. Hard labor, he needs he needs prison time. Put him on George. the front line in Israel. Oh, not Darius, that's a lot. He may be, and guess what, you know, this may be good things for him because you know, when he get locked up, maybe they can put him in a cell with R. Kelly and they can come up with a new song. So when they get out in 27 years, then they'll have a hit. You know, so this may be a good thing for him. He needs some time away. And hell, he may Child. want to be in there, you know, R. Kelly over there pissing on people and no telling what um Diddy was doing with them boys and them other little boys and them Allegedly. girls and them older girls and them boys and them boys and them boys. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't think if Diddy go to jail, I don't think he's getting out. If Diddy go to jail, I don't think he's going to get out. I think he's going to be in there for a long time. And speaking of Diddy <laughs> and <laughs> his shenanigans, Diddy's girlfriend ex-girlfriend or ex um a paid worker allegedly a um was online today getting into it with her bestie westy jt so young miami jt and santana oh why would you choose this picture uh, i'm gonna kick his i'll picture. call it for your resignation <laughs> immediately and immediately. What's wrong with the picture is this the only picture we had back there what's wrong with it <laughs> i am gagging this is when they started this is when they were first the city girls, so I guess we're gonna break it back to when they first became city girls with so they little cutie necklace. I don't see no like difference. That. 
by Travis. Anyway, <laughs> now, yes, they were online going back and forth today. J JT clocked Miami's T and told her, look, girl, this your last day playing um, Dumb Miss Mamas. And girl, oh, it went from there. She said, young Miami has been feeling like JT has been shading her. Young Miami also felt like Sideways in No Bars was about her. And it was it was a diss song to her. But in the song, JT did shout out the group multiple times, twice in both of the, each song. Um, so I don't know where she got that from. Santana was defending Carisha against one of the bars <laughs> that was on Twitter. So they had <laughs> so they had the bars on Twitter and he had said something to JT. And so JT got into it. Uh -huh. Not JT, I'm sorry, guys. It's a lot going on. Because I'm, I'm trying to read the screen, too. JT said something on Twitter, and one of the barbs was a defendant JT. And then, you know, Santana had to jump in and go at it with the barb. And it was a guy, so he felt like he was, you know, defending his friend. But today was just honestly a big mess. Because I honestly, I know a lot of people probably did want to see the demise or the downfall of the City Girls. I never did, because I'm a Florida girl, and I really love the City Girls. But I also will say, JT is taking it right now. And when the girls start taking it, Everybody can't handle it because JT is going to be the next star. Mark my, mark my words. She's a star. No? You don't, don't think so, Travis? Um, you know, honestly, I didn't even know. JT, can, and this is no offense to her. I don't know her. Um, JT can walk right past me at the Kroger's and I wouldn't know who she was. <sighs> yeah, that's No shade. I always I'm not, I'm no shade either. I'm, no shade, Travis. And you know, we typically don't agree on a lot of things, but... <laughs> Yeah, baby, she can. It ain't even gotta be the Kroger's. So we be at the stoplight, and I look over, and I just say, "Go ahead. You trying to turn? Go ahead." I mean, I don't. She's not one that I'll be asking to sign anything, or even asking for a picture. To be honest, no shade. I'm just being honest. I, I like Carisha. Say, I can recognize you know, that. If I seen her at the Taco Bell, but JT, <laughs> not I don't at the Taco Bell. JT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm being honest. Not at the Taco Bell. Yes, Taco Bell. Uh, Darius, I see now why I'm your favorite. I see. Who said that? When I told you that, try, I said, don't you sit up here and sit in front of these people. And that's what you do. See, you ain't even, you should have not even acknowledged it. <laughs> you must not go on with this stuff. Count your days. <laughs> <laughs> because of what? Oh, we How know y'all not like favorites. You ain't you gonna have a man trying to punch me in my head. If y'all know the City Girls, like, how do y'all not know who JT is? JT is the rapping girl, like. Okay. You know, I've said before, uh, I thought that, you know, it's very uh, amazing that Carisha was able to keep the City Girls name afloat while JT was away in prison. And it's crazy. In jail. Um, it, now it's crazy that Young Miami about to be the one doing hard labor if the allegations in this paperwork that's been filed to the United States Department of Justice is mm -hmm. true and real but i just think that it's so unfortunate to see the demise of this group happen um and i feel like diddy ought to be ashamed because i feel like at its core all of this is all going to wrap back around to puff daddy um and the way that he has just ruined these people's lives it's just very disgusting yeah, well I, what I, was cj in jail for uh, what, what's the name? For scamming right for the scam yeah, she, was, she, was, scam she was a scammer back in the day <gasps> Well, she's from Miami. That's Not what the girls do. I mean, but that's what they what Travis said last season. They need to be what they rap about. Yeah, oh, they, they were what they rapped about. Yeah, my girl wow. is exactly what she rapped about. My girl, my girl was a scamming girl. She said she had she had got her she been had her titties done on care credit back when in back in the day. Show up. So that's your idol. That's who you look up to. I didn't say it was my idol. Yes, actually, because she's a real girl. She doesn't mind getting out and showing and letting the girls know. Look, I I have a past, but now I have a future as well. Like mm, this is a lot. This is a lot going on tonight. <sighs> I'm just so tired. Y'all need to get it together. <laughs> going on to my next topic, <laughs> Megan the Stallion and Bigfoot. You know, she was on her live, and she was trying to be nasty, <laughs> trying to be cute. And you know, put and try to quote Nicki Minaj in that song and, and all of that good stuff. And it's just like, girl, let me tell you something, Miss Megan the Stallion, girl. Oh. <laughs> oh, the amount of sushi you have ordered. <laughs> oh, the things that you've lied about. Yeah, you heard the queen. Even pertaining to your mom. You know what? This is. This is high key like my type of carrying on. Like I don't know, Troy. I disagree. No, you know, I'm not I live for Nicki Minaj, but this is my kind of carrying on. Like, you're not going to get on a whole track and diss me and then say I can't make a joke about it. A bitch called me Dr. Seuss, so I wrote a book and about to make money off of your likeness. So, like, you know, <laughs> you no, like, no. okay. 
I actually, I'm not gonna lie, like, why is my horn, y'all? Pay yourself on bill. <laughs> Troy. All of confusion. I'm sorry. That's okay. My charger is not working. Mm. Well, if you have to go, go ahead and go. Your bill has been affected. Shut your weak ass ass up, bitch. Weak? <laughs> oh. And then she hit him with the biatch. <laughs> Travis, I mean, Troy, we going low like that? <laughs> I'm because, small, honey. I think you get hungry. <laughs> you know, you know what you got to do, George. Dario, don't, don't kill me. I don't know what's going on. Like it's really my the charger is just not working at all. You need a nap. Your battery dead. You know what? Get a jacket. Get a get a jacket. Get a jacket. I don't know. <laughs> phone not working. Charger not working. Like what the? Freak. I'm sorry, y'all. It's that retrograde. That Gatorade. But you got the longest part. <laughs> That's crazy to me. And normally it, it doesn't mess up, so shut up. Go you have been promoted to one of You got one more time, and it's going to be me and fucking you. It gets promoted. promoted. And I put that on my mama. Well, Ooh. you don't speak to me that way. Oh, you can bleed that on the playground. Oh, Ooh. and just like that, he's gone. Okay, let's move on. See, God don't play about me. So just think about it. That girl did all that talking when we started. <laughs> And look how we can move on without him. Well, go ahead and queue up the next topic, George. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't study my part. <laughs> well, I guess we'll talk about a little bit. Why, why Troy have to attack the different things? We're going to move along. Yeah. Listen, Iran planning a significant attack on the U.S. I just heard about this, y'all. But, child, uh, Darius, you the smart one out the group, or you pretend to be smart. Don't you teach social studies? <laughs> now you tell us what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so y'all know all of this stuff going on in God's with Hamas and the uh Israel the Israeli people. Um, it's been going on for months. And so apparently the uh foreign minister of Iran is accusing the United States of giving Israel a green light to strike Syria. And so as a result, they're saying that they are going to strike back at the United States. Um, President Biden had a briefing with his people to figure out like what the approach would be. They don't know when, where, or how this is going to happen, but this is really making it uh, very likely that what's right now just a, a conflict in that place could become something on a larger scale. So I think that when we uh, saw the news initially, I think everyone um, is just like frantic because I hope they don't bring that shit to Atlanta. Okay. I, I don't understand why they won't leave us alone. We ain't about nobody. We go here mind our business. No, that's, what, that's the end. problem. America won't mind its business. Child, I'm talking to you, President Biden. You're going to have to wake up on this one. Let me tell you something. Okay, come they on. come over here with all them bullets <laughs> and them rifles and them blow-up kites and them helicopters and all that stuff and do what they did back in during the Twin Tower days, 9-11. I'm telling you now, I'm going to vote for Trump if you play one of them games. So you better get that under control now because when Trump was in the office, we wasn't having all these issues. He gave us money. He gave us food. He gave us clothing. He gave us shoes, water, porridge, everything we needed, we got. So if we got to go backwards and go vote for Trump, then and sign me up because it's gonna be Trump stick on my next vehicle. Don't play with me now. So yeah, Trump, baby, um, Biden, go ahead and wake up. Kamala, yourself. if you need to go make him some grits to put him back to sleep and you take over, then baby, y'all need to be doing something because y'all ain't doing what y'all need to be doing. Now I'm upset with y'all a little bit because I'm still paying on my student loans and you ain't paid, you ain't paid them back yet. Where's that ten thousand dollars at, honey? Where is the ten thousand dollars? Okay, first of all, Travis, I just need that to back up just a little bit. Let's baby, did, he go, did, did he go stupid right then? It went real crazy, and I feel like we got to combat misinformation when we hear it. We got to call it out. Travis, Trump didn't give us none of that stuff, okay? The only thing that Trump gave us was a Supreme Court that has taken away um, rights for women in their birth control, in, in their birthing process. He has taken away um, affirmative action through his Supreme Court picks. That's the only thing that Trump has left us with is a hot mess in the, in the Supreme Court. Now, when we got out, they don't get this on the yeah. First pause for a second. Hold on, let me finish. Let me get this out. In sure terms enough. of the financial aid that we receive while he's the president of the United States, the president does not determine that. That's determined by Congress. And so we got to be very careful, especially in the black community, when we make statements like Trump gave us a stimulus check. Trump didn't give us a stimulus check. Congress gave us a stimulus check. And if we want to be honest about it, we would have gotten that stimulus check a lot sooner. But his dumb ass wanted to sign his name on each of the checks 
so that Negroes like you would think that it came directly from him. So mm -mm, that's why I, I had really tried to set up. Joe on Biden my... got Joe Negro. Biden has... Oh, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't you go there with the kids? You gotta be careful about this messaging because if not, then Trump will end up back in office. And you think we have been a shit show right now. You think this is a shit show. All I'm gonna say is I the rest Biden, of my time George. All I'm gonna say is President Biden, you to wake your ass up. You've been sleeping a little too long. I know you're getting up in age and you need a little longer naps, but baby, you need to wake up because I liked you, I voted for you, but baby. Wake up and get these people off our backs because they come on here blowing us up with firecrackers. I know something. I mean, look at it this way. We all got to go that way. That's yours. No. Who said that? I we do. That, I know being over there at that uh, funeral home ain't got you that desensitized. Uh, the got me over there talking stupid like that, huh? Let's just bring it on back. <laughs> bring it <laughs> on back. Oh. oh. Hmm. See how we moved on? Anyway, go, go ahead and continue. And that's fine. I'm glad well, you did. I, I didn't want the show to stop because of me. Well, if, I wanted, if, I wanted, if I wanted to, it would have. No, because you're, you're, you're giving me a lie, and I'm going to give you a lie back. Let's see if you can match that, babe. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> Can't believe the cheese. Can't believe the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Tori, welcome back to our show. <laughs> the show that you were asked to come on after me. Oh. Well, we don't need to go there because we can pull receipts. Oh, we sure can. We can. Let's talk to the EP. Travis, who gets the correct when they act like this? Where and I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about that EP. I'm talking oh. about other EP. Actually, your friend may have to ask you to come on the show, but the big boss called me to the show. Wait a minute, Troy. Calm down. Whether you agree with George or not <laughs> is the way to do it, baby. <laughs> we will. I'm telling you right there right now. Right now. I'll say one more thing and I got you. I'm, I'm sorry, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Trina. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk next about uh, this sensation that's going viral with the teacher who was recently asked to vacate her position because it was discovered by a disgruntled parent that she had a rap career. Do we have a video? Well, Dominique Brown earned Teacher of the Month honors, and then two months later, she was fired. But it wasn't about anything she did in the classroom. She says a parent complained about her rap career, which was off the clock. By now, Drippin' Honey's music video, Drippin' 101, has been seen by tens of thousands across numerous social media platforms. And it combines two of her passions, rapping and some of the students she's taught. That's right, a U.S. history teacher who's moonlighting as a rapper. But last month, she was forced out of her teaching job, and it started with a parent's complaint. That's when the first meeting was with my dean and the principal, and they were just telling me, like, hey, um, a parent said that they seen your social media and that you're a black influence because you're a rapper. I was like, hey, well, can we tell that parent to come in and see professionalism, see me in a classroom, see me after school, see me at all the games, see me dropping kids off every day, buying food, doing all these things. Can they come see me in my element before they try to say I'm unprofessional in it? My question to you all, do you think that it is, one, unprofessional for a teacher to have a rap career? And then two, is that really a distraction to the learning environment um, in the school or the district that she's working in? You um, know, I am, I'm, I, I'm struggling the fence on this one. And I feel like I'm not going to ever stop you from chasing your dreams, honey, but you can't be talking about shaking your ass and this and that and using the N-word, then you ain't tell me about history. She's going to have to pick a side. Now, if she want to be a rapper, rap full time and be a tutor on the side. But doing them both, I, I, I can see the parent, where the parent is coming from in this situation. I, I really can you know, I'm a teacher during the day and I'm a rapper at night. One of your students hear your music and it's, it seemed a bit vulgar to say the least, but you know, I wish her the best and maybe this will open a door. Maybe, a, you know, an artist or somebody will discover her, but I'm on the fence on this one. I'm sorry. If I'm being honest, I'm being completely honest. I don't think she should have been fired. And I did make a comment on this post. Mm -hmm. You know, it's teachers out here doing worse in the day. It's teachers that got on the fans. It's teachers that be out there in the after hours joints doing whatever. It's 
um, teachers out here doing drugs, drinking, getting drunk in these places, doing all this stuff, sleeping with students, all that crazy stuff, and they still got their job. So I don't understand why they should have fired her. It's not like she going to the schoolhouse and she dropping her EP off in everybody's um, book bag and then performing during lunchtime and then shaking her ass during recess. You know, she's doing this in her free time. So right. I don't understand what the problem is. I get it. If her music is a little bit vulgar and the people may find out. But guess what? When these kids get up in 18 and they go to that hard Twitter that's at night and they see their favorite teacher from math class over there bending it over, spreading it wide, doing all that crazy stuff, then they're going to be like, well, dang, Miss Brown shouldn't have been fired. But you're, I don't you think she should have been fired. But you're, yeah. you just said something in there. You said, you know, she's not at the school doing this and that, but if the kids are listening to it, right, does do, does that change their mindset of how do we respect her as a teacher um, when she's on, you know, an album, talking about shaking ass and dropping it low and whatever else she said. These kids, no, that's was, different. I, Hold I, on, I, Travis, I, let me finish. Go ahead. Let me finish. So I get what you're saying, but as a teacher, you know, she, she monitoring, uh, you know, she, I've been drinking. She's watching the kids over at lunch. And then all of a sudden you hear a child rapping your song, looking at you playing in your face, rapping your song. Like, where's the boundary there? That's, it that's be about, but these, these, kids, school, these kids, kids are singing all these crazy oh, songs now, working and singing sexy red. No, they singing sexy red. They sing can't Wayne with it. Can't but sexy red ain't stuff. teaching them. Sexy it does not matter. It does not matter. But they still inviting her to the schoolhouse to come do the motivational speech. And I think I'm Travis. I'm gonna agree with you 100 percent because I don't think that she should have been fired, and I don't think that she should have lost her job due to her having something separate outside. My thing is, so many people in life do so many different gigs. That's just like saying, oh, well, George, I don't want you to work in for the funeral home because you be on TikTok making funny videos or saying certain things on, on TikTok that doesn't go with our service. Or you are out posting every weekend, you're drinking, you're doing this, and you gotta come to the funeral home and and, and, and go into the church and you do whatever. Like, everybody has something- First of all, don't be so yeah, everybody like has, everybody has something separate that they do outside of work, outside of their full nine to five job, and they don't have to be stuck in that life. And I have to, I go through this so much at work because they want our life to be that job. My life is not this job. I have so much more outside this job that I want to do. And if I can't, and I, and I hope that she gets blessed in a way that makes them feel like, damn, we should have kept her because at the end of the day, I should not invest my whole entire life to something that I'm at eight hours a day. Where's, where, I'm supposed to do this. Forever? I'm supposed to sit on this forever? No. Like, I want to be able to come to work, do my job. She's teaching the kids. She's giving them their education. She's doing exactly what she needs to do at work. So when she leaves work, what she does on her own time is what she does on her own time. And that should not affect her job, period. Yeah, all right. I'm like, I'm like George. I, I'm looking at this from two different angles as well. Of course, I used to teach elementary school. And you're absolutely right, Troy. They want that to be your entire life. Like, you learn in your teacher preparation programs, like, you're placed on a pedestal as an educator. Like there's an expectation that you are, you know, setting a good example for the children and that you are, you know, being a representation of the school in all places that you go. And so that's something that you know going into the field, but also you making just a few dollars to do a whole lot of work. So all of my teacher friends that I know are having to work multiple jobs over the summer. They teach in summer school. They bartending on the weekends, they Instacart when they get off of work, they're doing all these different things just to try to offset and, and kind of, you know, make money um, to meet the, the needs that they have outside of what they're able to make from the school. So I think that it's unfortunate that one, that teachers are paid so little that, you know, they do have to resort to doing other things to make money, but then also that you're placed on this pedestal that you can't be human. And George, you asked a question earlier, like, does it change the way that the students will respect this person if they see them in this light? And I'm going to challenge it and say, like, yes, as a, a child, I might have more respect for my teacher if I know that, oh, wow, Miss Brown is a real, you know, she's a real person just like me. She likes the music that I like. She likes to, you know, hang out, whatever. She has a life outside of this job. Um, it can get a little icky when we start pulling back what the lyrics to those songs are. Um, but I think that it is unfortunate. And this is why so many teachers are leaving the field in droves because they don't want you to be a real person. They just want you to be this representation of the school. If you're yeah. going out on Friday afternoons, like my teacher friends and I knew if we were going out, we couldn't go out in the community that we lived and worked in because we might run into parents. I've had parents walk up to me while I'm at the bar trying to have a full-on parent-teacher conference and you're a teacher, so you know better than this. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's one of those professions where you know what you're getting yourself into, but it does take the joy out of teaching and learning. And that's why so many teachers are leaving the field. 
even with me being on this platform, I've had people question me like, oh, well, what, what's your brand? Like, does this align with your brand? Um, you know, or there's this expectation that you, you're always, you have to always be, um, show yourself in a certain light. I think it's very unfortunate and it's unfair to not give a person the full range to be and express who they are fully just because of the job that they do from nine to five. So my thoughts and prayers are with the young lady, but I'm with you, Troy. I hope that she gets another opportunity outside of this. Like you said, George, that helps to elevate her career and gives her the opportunity to follow this if it's truly a passion of hers. And I want to say this one last thing because, too, um, my ex is the viral teacher that's on TikTok that, you know, talks to his students, you know, whatever case may have you. And he went viral because of the things he was saying in the classroom, whatever. He hasn't lost his job. Love that for him. He is viral on TikTok, making money from TikTok. He has an endorsement with Telfar, I think, because they sent him bad, like the little East Pack bags and all that kind of stuff, like for him being a teacher. Um, and this came from just TikTok and him showing that he's teaching the students in the classroom. And I feel like if he can do that, he he has a, he raps too. He has uh, singles out and albums out or whatever case may have you. But he hasn't lost his job in that. And I feel like that puts other, that now gives other schools and other like districts something to be like oh well we can let you go because of you because you're doing this or you you know you you did this or you're you're a rapper you have this life outside of the dot and then and if this girl don't get her job back it's like oh well that we and you can't you can't fight it because what we say goes basically yeah. I, like he and he has one of the top classes and teacher he's one of the top teachers in his district he has like one of the highest class who's on like you said Darius your thing your thing about um Atlanta was about third graders and the reading below uh, you know, their their um, grade level. And I feel like he he's one of those teachers that have helped, you know, build that. So it's like, if it, there's a way, like you said, the students can connect with the teacher, I feel like they will respect her, will respect him more because they respect him a lot. They, it, even when we were dating and I seen how they interacted with him and how happy they were for him to come to class or if I was on the phone with him, how they talked to him. It's like when 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 you can relate to a person that you're in front of 24-7, basically every for eight hours a day during your life, why, why, why not be, why not have somebody Definitely. that I can why not, why not be somebody that I can feel like, oh, you know, you just like me. You live this life, too. Like, I, I, I feel like it was just it's just wrong that she lost her job, honestly. Yeah, it's a lot that goes into it. It also has a lot, has a lot to do with, like, unionized teaching states versus, like, at will, where they can, like, they can fire you if they want to, you know. Um, also, with it being a charter school, I think a lot of people in recent years have become big proponents for charter schools because they do have that flexibility within the school to, you know, make some decisions. But this is one of those things that they have the flexibility and the autonomy to do is to decide like, okay, if this were a public school, um, you might have to go before the board of education. You might have to have a, a what they call a tribunal or, a, you know, a, um, a, essentially like a court case with the board members and the superintendent. But in a situation like this, like, baby, you got to go you pack up your stuff and leave. And there's not really much that you can do to push back on that. So it's unfortunate, but it's a reality that a lot of teachers are facing. And I think that in a, a country where teachers are leaving the field, you don't even have somebody to replace that teacher with. It's going to be probably a sub or a para pro man. I guarantee you that they not, don't even have someone to replace her with. And that's the part that's even more sad because those children who were now, who were once being educated by the teacher of the month, by the way, you go from having the teacher of the month to just a warm body in your classroom because a parent got mad because your teacher, you know, wanted to, be on iTunes and follow her dreams. So it's just, it's jacked up, but it's a reality. Yeah. Wow. Another reality that we're facing is the um, Atlanta HIV infections. Um, it's being noted that nationwide, Atlanta is now coming in at number three mm. for the rank of new cases of, of HIV um, in the city of Atlanta. So what do you guys think about this statistic? Um, and what are we doing to make sure that we're like decreasing new cases and also trying to address the stigma surrounding um, the elimination of HIV in our communities. You know, what I will say in regards to that, um, one, I know a lot of people don't like to wrap it up. Let's be honest. We always don't wrap it up sometimes, you know, because some people like the feeling without the rubber. Um, but honestly, guys, we really got to start taking this a little bit more serious because it's taking our people out left and right back to back, back to back, back to back, and for to us to live in a city where we're not top three of this um, 
HIV um, stigma and just the infection itself, you know, it's, it gets a little bit scary. It makes you like, okay, you got to make sure you're protecting yourself and make sure you asking the questions up front to your partner. Like, what is your status? A lot of people be afraid to ask those questions and think they're being disrespectful. No, you want to protect yourself and make sure you're protecting your partner too at the end of the day. Like, what is your status? Being honest with each other. Going to get tested. You know, I don't know why people are so afraid to get tested. Go ahead and get tested. Even if you get a result that you may not like, at least they have the resources, the tools, and the medicine to help you stay undetected or get you back into a healthy state so you know i take that very seriously you know this is a field that i've used to work in i have many friends and uh family members and people that were very very close to me that have died from this um disease and also that's living with this disease and some people just afraid to even go get tested you know so i'm big on getting tested you know i don't always be humping all the time but you know i believe in making sure that i am good <laughs> so i'm grateful that i don't have that but i do have um, people that's near me and close and dearly to me that has hiv and you have to get educated because even if you do find that you have hiv you don't you shouldn't treat them differently or um think they're like disgusting or things like that educate yourself on that you know be a positive role model to them and be a, a lift for them because they're dealing with that you know so yeah i totally agree with everything you you said travis um again i think it's very important that we become knowledgeable about um HIV, you know, that we're protecting ourselves and utilizing the resources that are available uh, to us. I don't know what the ratio is. Unfortunately, I don't know what the ratio is. But child, if you're in a relationship, maybe be in your relationship and not in somebody else. Because I think a lot of times, you know, we people step out in their relationships and then they bring something, you know, back home. And I just feel like, and I, and I feel like that could be a part of it. But I, I also feel that the biggest component is what Travis just said is that educational piece, right? <clears throat> How do we educate ourselves? And I, you know, back in my day when I was in the world doing worldly things, um, you know, you can't tell me, baby, I got to see it for myself. You know what I'm saying? Let me see your doc. Let me, let me see. The, let me see your note. Let me, let me see it. Let me, let me see it, baby. Um, and, you know, I, I just think that'll be a, you know, I think that'll help out a whole lot. Education and being, you know, transparent. I think transparency is key in this situation. And as Travis said, you know, we should treat someone different or treat someone as though they're, you know, lower, they're disgusting or whatever, because we never know we, we, we never know people's story, right? So if someone have HIV, I think the, the first thing we need to do is, is embrace them, right? And, and make sure that they're healthy and they're taking care of themselves. So, I mean, that's what I, that's what I have to say to that. You know, it is scary uh, to know that the numbers are rising here in, in Atlanta. And I feel like Atlanta has always been deemed in that kind of in that category to a sense because we do know that this is gay Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? We know that Atlanta is where you want to go uh, outside of L.A. You're going to see a lot of people who look like us. And I just feel like that educational piece. Um, I really feel like that'll be a big help for our community, for sure. I um, mean, so many resources out there, you know, you have, especially in Atlanta, you have AHF, you have all these different um, places to go to get tested where testing gets free. Um, so definitely go out and know your status because again, like Travis said, you can also be saving your life and saving someone else's. Um, and I also do agree um, with Travis and George when they say, you know, you just treat everybody with love and respect because you just never know what somebody's going through or how they got in the situation they are in. And yeah. So just make sure you know your status. Yeah, and, and that, I think that's important to know your status because it does give you the opportunity to figure out like, okay, what are the next steps? I think we get so caught up on the stigma of not wanting to be labeled as, you know, this, this or that, whatever this or that may be. But there are so many different things that are out there right now. I think we're getting so close to a cure and that excites me um, because I feel like as we get closer to a cure, people will be more apt to get tested and that's the only way we'll really be able to end this um, epidemic. But there are, you know, pre-exposure measures that you can take via PrEP, that you can take uh, by mouth. There are injections now that you can do for PrEP. There are post-exposure methods that you can take. If you feel like you've been exposed to um, the virus, then you can take, like, that's essentially like a morning after pill. Um, they got Doxy on the uh, market now. People are taking Doxy to help them not only address like concerns with uh, HIV, but also think about chlamydia and syphilis and other uh, STDs that you know are running rampant, especially here in Atlanta. Um, and then also, if you do end up becoming, um, if you do end up becoming positive, there also are medicines out there that will help you become undetectable. And once you become undetectable, that means that you cannot transmit the virus to another person. And my thing has always been, I would rather be with someone who is positive 
knows they're positive and is working to be undetectable and healthy than to be out here raw dogging it with people who don't even care enough about you to make sure that they are yes. getting better, know mm -hmm. their status. Um, because it's just such a unfortunate position that we're in as a, a black community, especially in the black gay community. We have to do a better job of taking care of ourselves and taking care of each other. And I also think that this number is also alarming, but it's not surprising because I feel that for the past few years, we've been so focused on COVID-19 treatment and COVID-19 testing that HIV and STD screenings kind of took a back seat. So I think it's time for us to, you know, have this wake up call and realize that, you know, this is not, we're not, we, we're fighting this battle, but it's not over yet. And we still all have work to do. So we all have to do our part so that we can overcome this as a community. And it's not the nineties anymore. Sure, uh, right. HIV diagnosis is not the end of the world for a lot of people, it's just only the beginning. And so I think we have to get that out of our mind is that, oh, if you get HIV, you're going to fall flat on your face right there in that moment. Like, no, that's not the reality. There's so much out there. There are so many resources, as, as Troy, Travis, and Georgia mentioned, so many free things that you can access. And I think as a group, we need to come together. Uh, I know Troy did this a couple of years ago, and I was able to uh, celebrate with you all as we celebrated uh, National Testing Day. I think that we all need to get together and kind of use our small sphere of influence to encourage one another and hold each other accountable so that we can all, um, you know, make sure that we're taking care of each other. So if y'all are down, I have spoken with a friend about this summer hosting an event where we can showcase all of the great queer art that's happening in our community. And then also have an opportunity for us to get tested together and send just a message to the community that, you know, together we can overcome stigma and we can also overcome health inequity and we can just be healthy for one another. Yeah. And can I say one more thing? Sure. And since we're talking about this in Atlanta, let's be honest. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. my brothers and sisters in this community, I'm going to be honest, you know, Uncle, Auntie going to be honest with y'all. Y'all got to stop going to these clubs and your only goal is to holler at somebody and bust a nut. Let's be honest. You got to stop. That should not be your goal when you go to the club to be trying to meet whomever, whoever you find attractive, whoever y'all may find attractive and go and hopping in the bed with them the moment you meet them. We got to stop doing that. You know, this is not BGC Live days where you can have a one night stand and not worry about anything. You know, these are Jack and Grinder days. Okay, let's be honest. You can't be doing that these days, especially out Atlanta. Stop going to Bulldogs. Stop going to all these other clubs, and your goal is just to get drunk and bust a nut. We got to try doing where, where, where the bust a nut come in? At? Can we find? I'm being honest. One? Look, we, if we keeping it real on the group chat, we're gonna keep it real. That's what we find another. Hold word. on, wait a minute, George. That, that that was a nice one. You want me to say semen? That just sounds more bad. So I don't bust a nut. No, but, but we got to be rough. honest. You know, some people go to the club, and we been completely honest and keeping it real. Some people go to the club just to get drunk and find whoever guy they find attractive, and their goal is to hit it. But if that is your goal. That's cool. Okay, if that's your goal, because I don't think I don't think this helps the conversation. If that is your goal, just make sure that you are taking the preventive measures. All the ones we just that are aforementioned. There's so many different resources, so many pills. They got so many pills and potions out there. If you wanted to go and get bust down for a bust down or bust something down, do that. But just make sure that before, after, and during, you are taking care of your health so that you can be here. Because we got a long life to live. We got thriving, you know, and, and vibing to do. So if that is your goal. There's nothing wrong with that being your goal, but make sure that you're being smart about it, protecting yourself and protecting others in the process. And God bless it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Darius, I love you so much. I love you too, Troy. Thank you so much for letting me tap in a little bit. I know this your segment. I know how y'all get around right here at the group chat. Only, only a chance. Darius, I've been YouTube. trying to get oh. a split flop with me for, for a while. But oh, you have. That's your problem now. Flip flopping and tapping. Okay. <laughs> oh, you have. After all we just talked about, you trying to get there is a flip flop. That's crazy. That's what I'm talking about. Go, that's 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 walk on over here, Troy. Break, stank walk on over here, baby. Okay, listen, y'all. Since they want to tap it, flip it, and do all these other things, we're going to take a quick break so they can go ahead and hunch real quick. But don't go nowhere. We'll be back with <laughs> further videos on the group chat. <laughs> we'll be right back, you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. That is a bad <laughs> We have had a night full of talk, baby. It got deep. Then we came out, and then we went back in, and then we we left a serious conversation to go to funny videos. That's crazy to me. But, <laughs> you know, I don't make the rules. I just follow them. So we got three amazing videos for y'all tonight, and y'all better laugh, okay, because I picked them. And I know I'm a funny person, all right? So drum roll. 
Oh, ain't nobody rolling. Like, <laughs> Uncle, look at my friend, baby. Uncle, she on FaceTime. Oh. <laughs> it's a beautiful baby. It's a beautiful baby. It's a beautiful baby. Uncle, look at my friend, baby. <laughs> it's the jump for me. Oh! Oh! Why did you like his thing like that? That's so neat. Beautiful baby. The guy gave me the day because they got to do it. They got to make it. I swear to God, Jordan, I was going to say that. Oh my God. I swear I was going to say that. What are you looking like? They got the same forehead. Nose in there. It was that jump back for me, man. Like, yeah, just seen a ghost. Oh, that was so funny to me. Oh my God. What y'all think? I give you a B minus. Play. You got blue eyes, bro. Oh, yeah. Yo, look, look, come in. You got blue eyes. One blue that way, one blue that way, you heard? <laughs> oh, you got blue eyes, bro. Oh, Yo, look, 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 you got blue eyes. One blue that way, one blue that way, you heard? <laughs> I'm not gonna die. Hey, oh, baby, let me tell you something. Everybody, I'm trying to tell you. And you gonna hold you. Go hold you. My eyes get to do the burning oh. sometimes too, baby. So I ain't even gonna, I ain't even gonna play with that one. That will be out. But the gag is, he's very attractive. He, he is. He put some shades out. on him. Baby, so I know it's a girl, baby, though. <laughs> what you say, Travis? Oh, you doing the business? All you gotta do is put little shades on him, honey. It'll be all right. <laughs> oh, that won't be dead. <laughs> oh, all right. Girl. Y'all like we it. got one more. Play it. <laughs> oh, it can be. I'm in the midst of it. Oh, it can be. I'm in the midst of it all. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you something. That's gonna be George. He's gonna be. He's gonna have no friends. Baby, they would have had to close the church with me. Because I wouldn't have been no good. I, Holy Ghost, skip me tonight. Skip me. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 he literally saying his face off. Oh, he tried to catch him. That's the gag. And he said, uh-uh, that ain't gonna work here tonight. I'll be going to see him all night. Y'all, that wore me out. So listen, if it wasn't funny to y'all, guess what? He was funny to me. And that's what matters. Okay, this is my thing. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. That. Oh my God, that wore me thin. Guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in to my segment, Troy. Yes, George. Mm. Back to you. Oh. <laughs> I don't like you. your attitude tonight, man. You should call me when we get finished here. I'll call you when my phone charges or I find a charger. Mm -hmm. Child, Troy. I'll give you a call because clearly. Troy. What's up, Travis? George's attitude been loose as that man teeth right now. I'm trying to tell you, but they got something to come Baby, you low. <laughs> you low, but I don't have frozen chicken in my freezer. You ain't got nothing in your freezer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a choice. Oh, Let's go get us a pork chop plate. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. Where, where y'all get a pork chop plate from? I'm like, oh, Bulldogs, where they just said not to go. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, we not going to Bulldogs. Uh, mm -hmm. Where they just said not to go. Uh -huh. Well, guys, okay. nice tonight, baby. It is not Thursday. It's Monday, George. Girl, we on the show, bitch. That show's on Thursday. Look out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Baby, you going to have to find I your guess keys. You just dizzy. The key <laughs> you going to have to find your keys because you are dizzy without them. It's okay. that thing walk, baby. That thing walk just took everything out of him. I mean everything. He need a nap. And child, that's what happens when they got rid of that teacher, honey. Them students are acting like Troy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what we left with to teach our children. <laughs> and we living in times. I cannot wish y'all, because y'all are damn, y'all are jokes, okay? A joke. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for tuning into the group chat. Again, another night, every Thursday, 8 o'clock, sorry, 7 o'clock p.m., because at 8 o'clock, we are watching Chasing Dallas right here on Chasing Reality. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. Next week, maybe me and George can, you know, become a little bit more together versus apart. You won't be here next week. 
<laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, come on. I'm ready. We'll see who gets the call next week. Love you guys. Y'all make sure y'all have a good, have a great evening. See y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Right here on the <laughs> <laughs> That's all the things you can. Yeah.